Welcome! E aí, galera, beleza? Bem-vindo à nossa comunidade. Welcome to our community. Hey, what's going on, guys? It's OGC here. Today, we have a pretty special, a pretty amazing video in store for, for you guys. We're going to look at a bunch of PvP fights from the Imperium, uh, from Drake93. This is going to be Blood Moon versus the, the World. Um, we're going to be able to see everything from free to play players all the way up to like literally some of the top 30 players in the entire world at Art of Conquest. It's going to be pretty insane. So just want to put a little disclaimer. Uh, yes, I'm going to primarily be showing uh, Blood Moon stuff. Um, that is because I'm a part of Blood Moon and uh, the goal of this type of stuff is at the end of the day, years from now, I want to give the members of Blood Moon uh, memories. As far as like the other houses, I'm not here to provide them with memories. I'm here to provide Blood Moon with memories. They're, they're, they're my friends, they're the people that, that I care about. So, that being said, we're going to jump into the first fight. The first fight, the person directly above me, is number five. Number five is actually MM Chan. So she has a perfect uh, Onyx Dragon that looks identical to ours, except instead of Fatal Blows, she has Cosmic Storm. Uh, she does have one, one, uh, 109 in all three, four, three Dragonix. Um, <laughs> Her snipers are uh, seven star, and her mechs are also uh, seven star. So really good MM Chen. She is going up against Gunman. Gunman has um, he has the dragon armor. Uh, it also looks like a it looks like a perfect legendary um, dragon. So he has uh, what is this eight star snipers, which is pretty pretty insane. And for the max is seven star max. So he has uh, one higher level uh, as far as troop equipment. Snipers over MM Chan. Gunman's a pretty cool, good guy. Uh, Gunman won in both magic and command. MM Chan won in both uh, might and stamina. Although it's not a full win in might. When we look at the damages that came out, MM Chan's heroes went really big. Her Basrix uh, clearly must have lived because he did almost 40 million damage. Nora did a bunch on both sides. So let's go check out this fight and see how this went. So we can see this is an inverted fight. Uh, so we're going to focus on the uh, power side for MM Chan during, during this because uh, ultimately she, she won uh, so... It looks like uh, there are some nice black holes coming out from Gunman onto MM Chan. She starts off with the uh, second skill of Temporary Repair to uh, slow down at, at, like the pr fall of her Saul side in the progression of Gunman. Um, and she is able to put out a decent amount of damage. Now, now she's dro dropping the uh, Rhaxius Lanterns. Uh, I'm assuming to speed up everything on this bottom side. There's now a tag down on, on Chan's Dragon. Her mechs got cleared out pretty, pretty hard in uh, in the top side, and the enemy's dragon is moving up, which is going to put out a ton of damage. However, MM Chan only has a couple mechs left in this bottom side, and her dragon's actually moving really far forwards, which is going to... Uh, is scary, uh, but the dragon looks like he's holding up okay so far. She is uh, hung up on, on the bottom side. Uh, Gunman now does the temporary repair, uh, and Gunman drops the Basilisk Bat Splits. Uh, which is doing a, a bunch of damage to the MM Chan's uh, snipers. Chan's uh, dragon is still up and it's back to full health, which is absolutely wild. Gunman's dragon ended up dropping, um, and now it, it's 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 all over. MM Chan's just wrapping up. She still has her Basilisk up. Her Denji's in super deep, and all that's left is some, some snipers. So Gunman, fantastic job, man. Uh, MM Chan, you are the greatest. I I, I love you. So in our next fight, we have number 15, who is uh, directly above us. He is actually a member of Blood Moon. That is Revenge. Revenge is a 100% free-to-play player. He is using an Emerald Dragon. He's got Tranquility, Call of the Wild, Primal Will, Desertion, Scales, Cosmic Storms, and Hero Pred. So this is a, a very uh, support-centric uh, Emerald Dragon. It does have some damage abilities with the Cosmic Storm, but primarily it's there to support the troops. So Revenge is a 100% free-to-play player, meaning he has 6-star snipers, and I'm assuming 6-star uh, mechs. He's going up against uh, Death, so Death has a... Um, this looks like a, a, a Zul Dragon, and he has Noble Blood, he's got one purple. Um, so this is a okay, kind of old-school type of uh, Azul Dragon. As far as uh, troops and everything, it looks like 6-star uh, snipers, 6-star mechs. 
So, guys, even if, if you see in, in the world that there's all these crazy, powerful people, you can still find people around your, your own strength to go up against, um, and you can still perform very well. Revenge went out. He did use a pack of silver mechs. Um, I'm assuming this is towards the late, later portion of, of Dragonar. Uh, so let's go check this out. And it looks like uh, it's going to be another inverted fight. Um, so you see the Call of the Wild coming out. Uh, Ophidius uh, casts her snake. Um, there is a nice black hole. So Death started off with a black hole going up against uh, Revenge's uh, Saul side. We'll see how he deals with that. Revenge also does a black hole. Um, and the uh, Azul Dragon just pretty much instantly drops. Um, that was really, really, really fast. So Revenge is able to just cut through this top side. It, it just, I'm not sure what 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 went wrong here uh, for for Death. Um, because Revenge dropped that whole top side, and on the bottom side, Revenge hasn't even cleared out Silver Max yet. So. I think Revenge just strong-armed this player. Uh, this is a different death than the death that does the videos and stuff, uh, Conquest of Death. This is a, a death in our, our Drake. Um, so anyways, Death, uh, fantastic job. You lived up to your name. And uh, Revenge, fantastic job, man. Best free to play out there. All right, so for this next fight, um, please keep in mind these two players are super whales. Uh, however, there is still a big discrepancy between them. So for, for this next fight, uh, we will be seeing uh, Kill Switch, who is 9.4, pretty much 9.5 million core, going up against Bubbles. Uh, Bubbles is one of the Powerpuff Girls. Um, she's an amazing player. Bubbles is pretty much 8 million. So there's still a 1.5 million core power difference. Uh, so please keep that in mind for this next fight. So for, for this, uh, we can see that the 9.5 million core power player is using some silver skeletons. Uh, I'm assuming that he's been battling nonstop and, and uh, has to uh, has to go with some silvers because he's he's had so so many losses. Um, dragons are one 159. Um, both dragons are going to be absolutely perfect at this level of play. Uh, if they don't have a perfect dragon, then they're going to be far behind. Uh, so when we look at the warlocks, we we have 10 star warlocks with 1.5 million damage. Um, they're going up against. Uh, 10 star snipers uh, who have uh, 2.5 mil million damage and when we look at the max it's disgusting it, it it's disgusting it's such high level stuff uh, anyways we, we can see the damage coming out so kill switch is uh, Ophidius actually did some some decent damage along with their Nora uh, however bubbles aka Adina uh, she she did amazing her Rufio did a lot of damage so let's jump on in and see how this went so it looks like uh, Adina's power side is on, on the bottom here. Um, we'll have to keep a close eye on that. And I also want to see how her, her Rufio played. Um, because it looks like her Rufio was able to do a ton of damage. And going up against the Lich, you have to protect the dragon. So we see the tag coming down on the Azul dragon. And uh, Adina jumps immediately in with her Rufio. Um, that's huge. That's going to hopefully protect the dragon for as long as possible. The silver skeletons are making it in pretty far. There is a protection proc that came out from the Azul Dragon. Uh, Nora is starting to do some damage, and now Ad Adina is uh, spinning the Rufio around in the back line. Got a really nice Leo's Pride proc as it swung through that back area, uh, just to put out some, some more damage. Black holes everywhere. Adina is still throwing the Rufio back and forth, back and forth. Rufio, I'm sure, is going to do another spin in a second. The Azul Dragon is uh, back up to about two-thirds health. The Warlocks on the bottom side are cleared out. That's huge. So Adina survived that first real challenge from Lich. Uh, if Lich fails to take down the Dragon uh, in a situation like that, it, the whole battle can kind of go backwards and, and just collapse on the Lich player. But if the Lich player is able to take down the Dragon, then it's almost a wrap as long as they can kind of keep theirs up and they, they don't instantly collapse. Pretty cool stuff all, all around. So now the Azul Dragon's definitely moving in super close. And you can see wherever um, Adina or Bubbles, uh, wherever their dragon goes, her skills uh, are directly there to support the hindering the enemy's warlocks wherever her dragon goes. So if her dragon is moving up, 
in moving in range of the enemy warlocks you'll see uh in this case she did the jack spray and pray which took down uh it just annihilated two packs of warlocks there you can see at the first one uh herufio le leapt in and when herufio leapt in it offered the cc so that her dragon just didn't instantly blow up it was very dragon cent centric as far as the fight. So let's go jump into the next one. And for this next fight, we have Bubbles going up against uh, Lich King. Uh, so we checked out Bubbles stuff before. Let's go check out Lich King. Uh, he's got 159 in all uh, all three Dragonics, Magic Swell, Blessing. Um, pretty sure, yeah, th this is a perfect uh, Azul Dragon. Uh, and as far as uh, snipers, so he's at 8 star working on 9 star as far as the snipers and as far as the mechs, um, he's at 7 star. So there is a discrepancy uh, when, it, when it comes to um, troop equipment. However, core power and troop equipment, that stuff's all just numbers. So Adina won in 3 out of 4 stats and Lich King uh, did not fully win in Samina. He was almost there. Uh, he was 4.5% max HP off. Um, so let's just go check this one out real quick. It is the Azul Dragon versus Azul Dragon, Power Side versus Power Side, which is pretty interesting. So it looks like Lich King started off with the uh, Cleo's uh, hole. And it looks like um, Adina's uh, Nora is just able to get a couple really nice uh, blasts in deep uh, against Lich King's uh, snipers in that top portion. And then it looks like I think Lich King uh, misclicks because the targeting is down here on um, that looks like uh, Avalon. So uh, the the fight's over at that point in time. I, I mean, all of his snipers and, and everything is going to totally ignore the dragon and just go after the uh, after Avalon, and th that's not really going to do too much. So he he misclicks. Um, it's not the end of the world. We all do it. I. I can't even begin to tell you how many times I misclick stuff like that. So, uh, Lich King, great, great job for, for stepping up, man. Um, and Bubbles, Adina, fantastic job. You are the Valkyrie of Justice. And next, we have uh, Bubbles or Adina going up against uh, Pepe. Um, so, Pepe is actually an awesome dude. I actually like him a lot. He's He is uh, respectable, and uh, yeah, I, I, I like the guy. Uh, he's going up against Adina. These two are friends, so um, it, it's a friendly fight in a war, if, if that makes sense. So it looks like uh, Pepe has uh, a perfect Onyx Dragon, uh, 159 in everything. As far as snipers and everything, uh, 2 million damage, so he's got 9 star. And as far as his max, it looks like his max is still at 7 star. So he's rushing the snipers before working on the max. And when it comes to the stats and everything, Adina was able to win in both command and might which I, I think dwarf prefers uh and pepe was able to win in both magic and stamina which will mean his his honest dragon is going to do more damage and all of his stuff is going to be more tanky so let's jump on in and let's see how this goes it looks like it's power side versus power side both are using onyx so adina immediately starts off with the targeting on the uh enemy's uh, onyx dragon so the protection proc came out real quick you can also see her uh, her Nora is just launching the, those bombs going super deep. Uh, eight minutes into the fight and uh, Pepe's uh, dragon is gone. Adina's is still at full. He tried jumping in with the Rufio, but the Rufio was pretty much shot down midair. Um, I think that this really goes with uh, what, what Toby always tells me with like the, the tag, the dragon, and, and all that other stuff because it, it can be such an overwhelming difference when you do it properly uh for some reason whenever i do it I, it seems like it's the worst timing in the world um but if you do the tags properly which uh trial and error go into dual towers guys and um go go practice it for for yourself find out when when in what situations uh tagging the enemy dragon uh works best for you so of course they both do the thumbs up because they, they are uh both pretty, pretty awesome people and, and they are friends. So uh, Pepe, great job, man. Um, you, you're, you're an awesome dude. Ian Bubbles, fantastic job. And we cannot have a PvP video without including Toby. Um, I still think that Toby is, uh, he's still my favorite person to watch in Art of Conquest. Um, I just look up to him a, a lot in many different ways. So uh, he is rolling with, uh, this is going to be his Azul Dragon. His Azul Dragon has uh, Arcane Blessing, Void, uh, Scales. I, I mean, I think this is... 
This is a perfect legendary one. So notice there's no Cosmic Storm, there's no uh, Fatal Blows or anything like that, or Primal Will. Um, so he is going with a perfect Onyx Dragon. He's going up against um, one of the eggs, and the egg has a perfect uh, Onyx Dragon that is divine. So Toby's tr troop equipments and stuff, it looks like he has 10 star snipers, oh my gosh. Uh, and it looks like he has uh, 9 star uh, mechs, so no joke there. And the egg has 10 star snipers, um, and as far as their mechs, they have uh, almost 9 stars on, the, on their mechs. So pretty, pretty even fight as far as that type of stuff. We can see right off the bat, uh, Toby's Nora went huge. And Toby was able to win uh, fully in Might, partially in Command, and uh, the Egg was able to win in both uh, Magic and Stamina. Alright, so here we go. It is Power Side versus Power Side. Toby uh, immediately starts off with a tag on the enemy's dragon. Uh, we just saw this from, from Dina, and it seemed like it, it worked out pretty well. Enemy's dragon is down to a sliver of health. There's now a tag down on Toby's dragon, and uh, Toby's dragon is starting to drop. Toby does a, a heroic leap in deep, so because he was able to do that first uh, first skill tag, he was able to get the Rufio leap in. Now, even though his Rufio died, there's still that uh, the circle on the ground, which is going to slow the attack speed of the snipers. It looks like on the top side, uh, Toby's Belrog is kind of tanking everything up, and uh, his snipers and everything are still able to be alive, putting out damage. Um, Enemies Nora is now pumping out some, some good damage, getting nice and deep on his snipers. However, you can see that the eggs uh, snipers are all completely gone, and all they have left now is a low Nora in the corner with a bell rod coming up. There's a tag, and she instantly goes down. Uh, so really, really good fight. This this whole fight was pretty much decided in like the first seven seconds. Uh, as soon as as soon as Toby got that first tag out and um, there, there was a response of, of a tag and that the response of the tag w was slower. I think that right there uh, pretty much uh, decided the, the fight right at the start. So, Egg, uh, great great job, man. Uh, Toby, fantastic as always, man. Hashtag Toby Nation. Let's get the comment section going. All right, so we have Toby going up against uh, somebody. So, somebody has a... This looks like a... Uh, so it's like a perfect uh, Onyx Dragon. As far as equipment, they have 10 star snipers. Oh my gosh, this is a lot of people with 10 star stuff. And they have uh, one 10 star piece and three 9 star on their mechs. So this person right here is no joke. Uh, that is scary. So this looks like an inverted fight. Toby starts off with an Earthquake. Uh, the Earthquake looks like it's uh, towards the enemy dragon, slow them down and everything. I'm interested to see what his uh, second skill is going to be. Um, Alright, so, so far so good. Toby jumps in with his Rufio, kind of towards that middle section. Um, and he gets his Rufio down. It looks like on uh, Jacks and two packs of uh, Snipers. I think the enemy's Ophidius is there as well. Meanwhile, Toby's working. Uh, he's working hard on this top side. Uh, enemy. Some somebody now puts on the Cleo Black Hole, and it looks like uh, Toby is now putting out his Raxius uh, Lanterns. I don't know uh, if they are on his own troops. Um, it looks like it is on his, his own troops in the top section to speed up the snipers so he can start swinging around. So now to Toby can swing around. The, the mechs are down for up there. Toby still has like two packs of mechs with like one third health in both for this bottom side, which means all of Toby's top area with his power side is just going to come crashing down uh, on the flank of somebody. You can see the Jack Spray and Prey. I love that Jack Spray and Prey when he's like on the opposite side of the battlefield and he's relatively safe. He takes down some of somebody's dragon and at this point in time he's just going to wrap it up. So uh, somebody for re really good uh, job with, with the fight, man. Um, Toby, oh my gosh, man. Hashtag Toby Nation. And for this nice fight, we have Toby going up against King. So King is going with the Emerald Dragon with Call of the Wild. Uh, he's got three damage abilities. Uh, he's got scales. Um, Fortitude, Aerial Blast, and Hero Pride. Of course, one almost 159 in all. Uh, King has 9 star snipers. Uh, I wonder what their mechs are at. Actually, 8 star mechs. Okay, so let's uh, let's check out the stats and everything. It looks like Toby won in all three stats. Uh, the only one he didn't win in was Magic. So let's go see how this one went. So this is another inverted fight. 
and it looks like Toby's starting off with the Earthquake King, then uh, responds with his own Earthquake. Both uh, Ophidius's uh, cast out their Snakes. I'm interested to see if Toby leaps in with his Rufio at the second skill, um, or if he does something different. Uh, so Toby actually did temporary repair, and King leaped in with the, the Rufio. So Toby really wants to uh, keep his Sol side up for as long as possible. Um, that one caught me off guard. Uh, so now King is uh, dancing around with his Rufio, causing more suns. Toby's actually doing Denji. So you can see that every single fight, all of the skills, Toby's adapting and he does not have like a set skill order plan. Uh, he might have a general idea, but the, the dude adapts to the game uh, in each fight individually. It's beautiful to watch because it's amazing. This is how come when people say, hey, what skills should I cast for this or, or that or like what, what's my skill order? You can have a rough idea, but ultimately it's going to come down to that fight. So King, really good job, man. You came out swinging. Toby, fantastic. Uh, thank you for a great example of switching up the, the skill order. And for this next fight, we have Pepe going up against uh, Toby. So uh, we saw both of these players stuff. Uh, so let's just go watch them collide. Uh, Toby won in both uh, mag uh Jeez, if I can get my wording right, this would be great. Toby won in both Command and Might. Pepe won in both uh, Stamina and Magic, although not fully in Stamina, but uh, a good portion. Um, again, Toby, my idol. Uh, Pepe, I, I think that he's a really good guy. Um, enjoy uh, playing playing the game with him. He's one of those people that, like, it doesn't matter where he is, you can, you can respect him. Uh, so it looks like Toby starts off immediately with a tag onto uh, Pepe's Dragon. And Pepe responds with a tag onto Toby's Dragon. Uh, Toby's was slightly faster. Let's see if that really makes a big difference when, when it comes to the, the dragons. Um, Toby jumps in with the Rufio. So Pepe's Dragon dropped uh, much er earlier. Uh, Toby's Dragon is still up. I don't know if that was a formation, like a positional difference that, that caused that. Or if it was all centered around on who got the tag first. Uh, but now... Uh, Toby's Badrix uh, just died, which is not good, but he has his Spray and Prey going, uh, and the dragon's going to start moving up. So the dragon will absorb whatever sniper damage is left, and his jacks will just kind of mow them down as he does the Spray and Prey. Really, really cool stuff. So Pepe's, he put his jacks more in the, the middle. Uh, we, we can see his jacks over there, um, and I, I kind of want to ask him why. Uh, I'm sure that there's a, a really good reason, and like, like, for example, guys, people like Pepe or King or um, the, those types of players that were watching this, like they would flawless me. So I, I, I mean, Toby or Dina or um, Chan can can make it make it look easy. But like Pepe, he's no joke. He would flawless us, and I, I think he did. I think uh, if you watch the uh, the Imper Imperium or Dragonar fight that we had, Pepe attacked us, and I'm 99% sure that he either flawless us. Or I didn't have enough troops and I put out my heroes. Uh, the dude is no joke. So um, amazing stuff. Amazing stuff from both players. And for our last fight, we have Mike G going up against Toby. So M Mike G has a Onyx Dragon as well. He's got the Swell. Uh, it, it looks like this is this is almost a perfect dragon. So he's one skill off. He has the uh, Twilight Vortex. Um, as far as like the troop equipments, he has 10 Star Snipers with like 2.5 million damage. This is some crazy, crazy stuff, guys. Uh, he has nine star max, which is just disgusting. When we look at the stats and everything, it looks like, um, whoa, did Toby lose in command? All right, so it, it, oh no, he won in command. He lost in might. So it looks like Toby won in both stamina and command, and Mike Chi won in both uh, magic and might. So let's go jump in. Uh, this will be our last fight for, for the day. Um, so Toby is down here on the bottom side and it looks like the tag on the dragon immediately He's able to get the protection proc right, right away I bet you he'll jump in with the Rufio for his, his second skill or no he already got, has the jacks doing the spray and pray What hold on we gotta see that again how? This is ridiculous All right, so we have a instant tag Okay, maybe his jacks was not in, in the spray and pray um my eyes just are not what they used to be. 
So he has the instant tag on, on Mike G's dragon. Uh, did a fantastic job. Toby's, uh, Toby's Jax ended up uh, falling down. Uh, you can see Toby's Nora just light, lights up everything uh, in that bottom section. And I mean, at this point in time, it's, it's already a wrap. There's no protection product that's come out from Toby's Dragon. Uh, he just kind of cut right through. Uh, and, and anyway, so and even in the top side, the top side Toby won too. So I mean, this was a super one-sided fight. Uh, Maichi is a fantastic player. He used to be a part of Blood Moon. Um, now that he's playing a little bit more, it, it's nice to see him. Um, so Mike G, great, great job, man. And Toby, this was, uh, th this, this last one was unreal, man. Just walk through on all three areas. Anyways, um, let me know what your favorite fight was in the comment section below. Make sure, uh, if, if you are a hashtag Toby Nation fan, you let me know in the comment section below. If you're a, a big Adina fan, let me know that. Uh, and as always, please smash the thumbs up button, subscribe if you have not subscribed already. There's a bunch of cool stuff in the description of this video and all videos, such as the merch store Patreon page. Thank you to all the Patreons out there. We also have Discord and Facebook and all that cool stuff. Go check it all out. I look forward to seeing you guys soon, so take care and have a wonderful day.